Okay, you want to be able to link sheets together or workbooks together in a way that they will automatically update. In this video, we're gonna look at three different methods for achieving this. First method just uses simple cell references. The second method uses references to Excel tables. The third method uses Power Query. So what I want to be able to do is link two columns in this sheet, the customer column and the payment receive date column to this currently empty sheet here. So the first method we'll look at uses simple cell addresses. So I'll go to this empty sheet, I click into cell A1, I type my equals in like I'm writing a formula, I go to the sheet that I want to link to and I click into the first cell I want to link to. And if you look in the formula bar, there's your formula. It gives the name of the sheet followed by an exclamation mark. That's how Excel references another sheet, followed by the cell address. So if I then copy this down to row 14, you see we get all the customer names. Now I'll do the same thing for the payment receive date. Click into B1 here, type equals, go to my invoice sheet. Click in cell H1 here, press enter. Then if I widen this column a little bit, copy this down. Now, this may be a bit confusing. Over in the original sheet, I had dates. Now I have numbers. So although we've created a link between the sheets, it hasn't actually copied over the formatting. So what I would need to do is select those cells. And then on the home tab of the ribbon in this drop down that currently says general choose short date so let's see if it does automatically update if i go back to my invoice sheet if i put today's date in the cell that's control semicolon for today's date and i go back to this other sheet you can see that date's been automatically carried through now let's look at a slightly different method we can use to achieve the same thing. And with this method, you're gonna start in the sheet with the data that you want to link to. And you can select the cells that you want to link to. So I'm gonna select the customer name cells, then hold down control and select the payment received date cells. Then I'm gonna copy. So I could click on the copy button or I could use control C. Then I'm gonna to move to the sheet that I want to copy this to or link to. I click in the cell that I want the first item of data to appear in. And then I go up to this paste drop down button and I choose this option here, paste link. You can see here that it's pasted both columns in. And what it's done is actually generated that cell reference formula for us in both of these columns. Now this method can also be used across workbooks. So if I go back to the original invoice sheet, what I'm gonna do is create a new workbook, control N on my keyboard, and then I'm gonna split the screen. So this is a completely different workbook, and I want to link it to our original workbook. So I can do much the same thing. I can start here, I can say equals, and then click in the first cell that I want to link to. Now what you'll have to do, because it's in a different workbook, you have to click once and then click again into the cell that you want to link to. Now, if you look at the formula in this instance, as well as specifying the sheet that you're linking to with an exclamation mark, it puts the name of the workbook in our little formula in square brackets. So if I press enter. Now, if I try and copy this down, it doesn't seem to work. I just get customer, 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 customer. So it doesn't seem to work as well. Let's just undo that. Now the trick here, if I go back into my formula, is to get rid of these dollars. So if I backspace those dollars, or if you're conversant with these dollar symbols, you can just press F4 to get rid of the dollars. You have to press it multiple times. That's the F4 key at the top of your keyboard. Anyway, one way or another, get rid of the dollars, and then you can copy that formula down. If I widen the column and do the same thing for my payment receive date. So click in the cell that you want to create the link in, type equals, click over into 
the workbook that you're going to link to. Click into the first cell that you want to link to. Then you want to get rid of the dollars. Press enter and then you can copy down. So if I put today's date in this cell as well, you can see it automatically updates. Right, I'll just close this additional workbook down. Expand this. Now let's go back to our original scenario where we were linking between sheets of the same workbook. Now what would happen if we added a new record to our original data? So I'll just put in test as the customer name and today's date, and the payment receive date. Now if I go back to the sheet that I was linking from, you can see it hasn't included that new record. Now that's because there is no formula here in this cell that is looking at these cells on the original sheet. So what I would need to do is copy this formula down. Now what you could do is just copy the formula down as far as you think you're going to have records on the original sheet. But you see that you'll get another problem if you do that. First of all, we're getting zeros here because there are no customer names and we're getting this strange date here because there are no dates in these rows that we're referring to. So what we do is we're going to our original formula up here in A1 and we're going to use a little if statement. So if invoice A1 is not empty, so it's less than, greater than, and then two speech marks. If true, then we want to return this value or this cell reference. Otherwise, we want an empty text string. So again, two speech marks. So if I close the bracket there and press enter, and then copy this formula down, you can see that instead of getting those unsightly zeros, you just get blank cells. So I'd need to do the same here. So if this cell address is not empty, then return that cell address or the value within that cell. Otherwise, return an empty text string. Copy it down. You can see it works for us. Now I do need to apply some formatting in these cells. But now that problem is fixed. Okay, let's move on to the second method for linking data across sheets. This method is only going to really work in the way I'm going to show you if you have Excel 365. So if you don't have Excel 365, I've probably used the previous method. But with Excel 365, things are made a lot easier. What we're going to do, first of all, is house this data in an official Excel table. And to do that, we click somewhere in the data and we go to insert table, or you can use the shortcut key control T. Now, the only thing you need to be mindful of is this option here, my table has headers. If you do have headers, which we do, that needs to be ticked. Click on OK. Now you can give the table a name. So you need to be on the table design tab. And then over here in the table name box, I'm going to call this invoice record. Press enter to confirm the name. So I want to link to this table in this blank sheet here. Now, if you wanted to link to the whole table, not specific columns within the table, what you do is you'd say equals and then type the name of your table. So there it appears invoice record. Then you'd open a square bracket and you choose hash all at the bottom here Then close the square bracket and press enter. And that'll bring through all of that data within that table. Now, the great thing about this method is if I go back to the table and I type in a new record, put today's date in here, this will automatically bring through that data. Now here, you will notice that I do need to apply the formatting as we did with our previous example.
but this is a great way of keeping your data up to date using a table it automatically expands when you add records or when you change records so if i changed this record here it would automatically update in the linked copy of the data now i'll just clear this if i wanted a link to particular columns within this table what i would probably do is type the column headings in so it would say customer payment receive date and then i can link to particular columns within the table so again i type in the name of the table open a square bracket and i choose the column that i want to reference so that's customer and then close the square bracket and it will bring through those customer names and i can do the same thing over here need to apply a bit of formatting here so if i add yet another record here test two today's date in go back to the sheet you can see it has bought through that new record but the only thing it doesn't do is then apply the format to the new record so i might want to still highlight those cells and select the correct format for that particular column now can you do the same thing where you want to link to a separate workbook yes you can so if i move back to this table I'll create another new workbook. I'll split the screen. So if I wanted to link to the whole table, I'd say equals, and then I'd click into this sheet that I want to link to, and I'd select the whole table. And if I press enter, it brings through all of that data. I've still got to apply all the formatting, but it has brought through the data. And if I add test three, you can see it automatically feeds it through to the new workbook. If I wanted to link to particular columns, then I would say equals, then select the column I want to link to. And then the same for the other column. And again, if I add new records, they'll automatically feed through to the copy or the linked copy in the other workbook. Okay, I'll close this workbook down and we're gonna look at the final method, which is using Power Query. So what I'll do first of all is just get rid of these rows. Now with this final method, the Power Query method, you need to start off in the table that you want to link to and your data should definitely be in a table. So as a reminder for that, that was insert table. Now, once it's in a table, you want to go to data, make sure you've clicked somewhere in your table and then click this button from table range. That'll open the Power Query editor. Now, if you want to link to all of the data in that sheet, then you won't need to do the next step but we only want to link to particular columns. We want to link to the customer column and the payment received date column. So this column is already selected. So I'm gonna hold down control and select this column. And then up here on the home tab, I'm gonna to go to this remove columns drop down, and I'm gonna choose remove other columns. I'm then gonna change the format of this column. So it just shows date. So I click on this little button here, choose date. And then I'm gonna click on this button, close and load. And it loads the data into a separate sheet, which is called invoice record. That's the name of that table. And I'll just drag it to the other side of the original sheet, invoices in table. And let's see if it updates. So if I added test one here, Now go back to the invoice record sheet you can see that it actually hasn't updated now if you're using power query what you've got to do is refresh the query 
Now you can either do that over here on the queries and connection pane, which should appear automatically if you've used Power Query. If it doesn't appear, you can go to data, click this button here. So if I close that down and then click on it, it'll come back up. So you'll see there's a little refresh button there. If I click on it, it brings through the new item of data. Now you can actually set up your queries to automatically update. So still on the data tab and go to refresh all and then connection properties. And you can actually get your Power Query to refresh every X number of minutes. So you could take it down to one, for example, and you can also get it to refresh when you open the file. So if I click on OK, what I'm going to do is go back to my invoices table and I'm going to add another date and another record. And then if I go back to the sheet, I'll have to wait for one minute, but I should see that the data automatically refreshes. Now, I won't make you wait for one minute in the video. I'll pause the video and start it again, just as it is about to update. So there we are, you saw it update for me automatically. Now you can use Power Query to link across workbooks. Before I do this though, I am going to save the changes that I've made to this workbook. Then I'll create a brand new workbook. And then I'm going to go to the data tab, get data from file from Excel workbook. I'm going to select the file I want to link to, import. And this will give a list of all the tables and the sheets in that workbook. So I'm going to link to this original table here, invoice record one. And then I want to transform the data. So again, you could either link to all columns or particular columns. We want particular columns. So I've got the customer column selected and control the payment receive date column selected, and then I'm going to remove other columns. And then it's just a matter of closing and loading. And it loads it into this brand new workbook. And the refreshing options are exactly the same. You can either manually refresh or you can go to connection properties and refresh every X number of minutes and or refresh data when opening the file. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that is useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.